Welcome. And I wanted to start off this video with somebody's comment who reached out to me and said their cathedral, the St. Anne's Church, was in danger of being torn down. And so I thought I'd have a little look and share this with you all. A really beautiful, beautiful cathedral. And here's another little look in times past. And here it is in present day. Truly a marvel. And interestingly, they want to tear it down, it seems. In late October, the bishop announced that they would be closing after 112 years. And they would join the Catholic community of Central Fall River. The upper church has been closed since 2015 after chunks of plaster fell from the walls. Masses have been held in the basement, and it was clear that repairs would be costly. Looks like 13 million to repair it. The St. Anne's Church Preservation Society formed and is working with an attorney to save the church. In Falls River. So if you live in the area or can help this effort, I suggest you do. Definitely worth preserving. And what seems to be some very large block work underneath here. I'm not sure. But let's move on to another comment that I received. Talking about the Notre Dame fire. And really pointing out that the cathedral in Cologne, Germany is very similar but much greater. So let's have a little look at that. And we have before in past videos, but I thought we would revisit it with fresh eyes. And I just love this cathedral. Just a massive, massive machine. And here's a little look. I mean, just incredible. You know, I don't think that one would build this way just for artistic purposes. I mean, this is crazy. And just beautiful. But again, the same style. The same cross-like roof structure with the spire. And then these massive, massive, what I've often called Cambodian kind of style spires. Just beautiful. And I don't know, this thing is so aged and weathered. It almost looks like it's been through many fires in its day. But again, what is going to burn this? This is stone and metal and unburnable materials. Even if there was a little wood in here somewhere. Really beautiful. And really unbelievable to simply call this a place of worship. Surely the Lord never required such a thing from us. But nevertheless, one of my favorites. Detail at its finest. Just amazing. From another world, really. And I'll be very curious to see how their efforts go in the reconstruction of the Notre Dame Cathedral. Whereas it seems that the same builders built each of these structures. Not much difference at all. The same contractor, or at the very least the same people. And no churches these days are this amazing. And here we have a little look at the spires on the top. And let's get nice and zoomy here. Just really impressive and very much seeming as if they are made in sections again perhaps a kit and just overly beautiful and these don't appear to be crosses there's a lot more to it these fan out in all directions and the cologne cathedral the catholic cathedral in cologne in germany is the seat of the archbishop of cologne it was declared a World Heritage Site merely in 1996. 
it's Germany's most visited landmark, attracting an average of 20,000 people per day, and currently the tallest twin-spired church at 157 meters, or 500 plus feet tall. Construction began in 1248 but was halted in 1473, unfinished. Work did not restart until the 1840s, so a 600-year halt, approximately. The cathedral is the largest Gothic church in Northern Europe and has the second tallest spires. When construction began at the present Cologne Cathedral in 1248, the site had already been occupied by several previous structures. A Roman temple in the 4th century, other Christian buildings, including a square edifice known as the oldest cathedral that was commissioned by Maternus, the first bishop of Cologne. During excavation, some graves were discovered, including a boy that was richly adorned. Both graves are thought to be from the 6th century. So here is a apparent photo in 1856 with a 15th century crane on the south tower. Let's have a little look at this crane. Really amazing. And perhaps unfinished, as they say. Or perhaps destroyed. This looks very old. This doesn't look like any sort of new construction. And nor does the surrounding buildings. But I don't know. This thing is just a butte. An absolute butte. And... And absolutely fireproof, as is this building next to it, and has clearly withstood the test of time, but really doesn't seem Catholic to me. And here we can get a closer look at one of the spires, or Antiquitech devices, and a view from the air. And really, these look like some kind of fins that we would see in a motor to dissipate heat. These looking like some kind of engines from up here. And let's move on. And naturally I had a bunch of comments to cover the Notre Dame fire. And yet, uh, you know, I feel like so many people have covered it. But nevertheless, I will have a little glimpse at this most recent semi-destruction of one of these ancient structures. And here we have this little NBC News depiction of the cathedral in a really amazing, amazing structure and looking very machine-like, very much like something that had another purpose other than a place of worship and really constructed of mostly stone, cast concrete sections. The fire spread to the spire at 7.40 p.m. And in 10 minutes, 7.53, the spire collapses in 10 minutes. So really amazing. I mean, I think even if there was wood in here, as we'll see pictures, as you know, they're telling us that there is wood in here. But even so, a little fire starting in here, maybe it burns out the wood. But at this point, you have a lead roof and spire, is what they're telling us. So, you know, a metal, some sort of metal. And, you know, even if the wood would collapse in here or burn out, you would still imagine that the metal structure especially being pyramid shaped. I mean, this kind of arch or pyramid shape is self-supporting. It should support itself. There's no reason why all this metal should burn out. I mean, yes, even if they used wood to initially construct it before they applied the metal on top, now you could burn out the wood. You could actually burn it out and this should be self-supporting. And in 10 minutes, they're telling us that this collapses. Very unusual. But nevertheless, this is the story.
You know, they tell us that it was made of 500 tons of wood and 250 tons of lead. 250 tons of lead and a ton is 2,000 pounds. So we're talking about 500,000 pounds of metal that just incinerated in 10 minutes. And yet, you know, to imagine burning this down, any of this metal and stone is pretty ridiculous. You know, this is reminding me of the fires that we see all over the world that seem to melt metal and appliances and everything and turn it into powder. And this, you know, I think many of you can appreciate that this is not normal. And again, you know, if I was to try to come in and burn this down, you know, give me a blowtorch and I would apply it to any portion here and I'm going to have no luck at burning this down. I mean, how ridiculous. And here they're showing us the inside of the cathedral. They call it the forest because of its long planks of 800-year-old wood collapsed in the fire and cannot be rebuilt in its original form officials said. It was one of the oldest of its kind in Paris. And here they're telling us that this rose window was created in 1260. Beautiful rose window. So 1260, just amazing, and very doubtful that they'll be able to recreate this. And then the great organ that sits right below the rose window, which was perfectly preserved, was built in 1730. So the organ's built in 1730, and the rose window is created in 1260, offered by King St. Louis. Spans roughly 33 feet across. So first they're telling us the rose window came first in 1260, and then in 1730 they built the organs. And really, this doesn't seem right. You know, these organs seem to me that they were created by the same designer at the same time. And these organs work in perfect symmetry with this rose window. It's meant to emit either a sound or a frequency or both. And the rose window acts as a speaker, resonating this sound outwards into the city, perhaps uh, emitting a hailing frequency, a beneficial machine. But again, to tell us that there is this gap from 1260 to 1730, so, you know, approximately 500 years, and I just don't think so. And I don't think we really understand the purpose of this ultimately machinery technology. So now I want to move on to some before and after pictures of Paris and touching on the degradation and deterioration of cities leading up to our recent time. And here are seven before and after pics showing how Paris has changed in a hundred plus years. So we have the 1900s, the Eiffel Tower and surrounding buildings for what appears to be a world's type fair. And in modern times, everything gone. And a little look in the 1900s in this globe. I don't know if this is a reflection here of some light. And in 2017, everything gone. And it looks like they've just er destroyed everything on the waterfront and made this walkway here. And really amazing here in the 1900s, a view on the Seine from a bridge. And really glorious. Looking very Disneyland-like. Kind of makes me wonder about Disneyland now. But yeah, really absolutely amazing. And such beautiful architecture. And this appears to have stonework. But really remarkable and very permanent seeming. And, you know, right up to the edge of the waterfront. Building structures and stone and all removed, gone. And really, the water level seemed to be much 
higher in this photo seem to be about to here and now the water level appears to at least be I don't know 20 or 30 feet lower in this photo if I'm seeing that correctly and in the 1900s again looking very Chicago World's Fair White City like very beautiful and some of the most beautiful light posts ever and in 2017 still very much similar to the past but this building is gone this beautiful building but much does remain all this has been leveled as well it seems but this one in the background here remains and 1900s the Palace of the Nations, same names given all over the world, and very beautiful. The Eiffel Tower in the background, and again, building structure right up to the edge of the water. And let's see, in present times, buildings removed that once were at the edge of the water. And now a great walkway. Again, let's have a look. Much more beautiful in the past. Much more beautiful. Very sad. And again, 1900s. And just amazing in every way. And current times. Everything on the water's edge has been demolished. And now is a grand sidewalk and here again 1900s looking absolutely amazing and even if it was built in this time period at the very least it proves that we have gone backwards and we do not and seems that we cannot build in this fashion anymore and prefer to level any evidence that we once could and that's it you know everything looking much more boring in modern times than this beautiful past and in any case I was uh, sitting down today to read and respond and I looked up here to this section you know these would normally be my comments right up here we see a section that says likely spam and I clicked on likely spam and these are comments that are not even showing up but in any case it's very disheartening you know I really don't have full control it is not my platform ultimately but I just wanted to share this you know this is all precious valuable addition to all the research that has been done and I want to thank you all I really am grateful. And lastly, I just wanted to focus on this grand bell. And notice the little man down here, below the bell, on the bottom right side. And this bell is found in the Cologne Cathedral in Germany. And so, yes, with all the stories they tell us, and, you know, 600 years to build this and that, and yet, here is this bell. And a bell is typically done in one pour, or one casting. And this is very anomalous, and just something to consider. Who were these people, once again? So that's it for today. I do hope that you enjoyed, and have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe.